Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen, I'm Aisha and I welcome you all in this course of production and operations management which is developed at Alama Iqbal Open University. I'm also pleased to welcome our expert Dr. Muhammad Abbas Chaudhary. During the last session on capacity planning, we had a very interesting discussion on the word capacity and its various connotations. Today we will continue our discussion on capacity planning. In our last session, we discussed capacity, in which we further discussed design and effective capacity, capacity and operations management, capacity considerations, managing demand, demand and capacity management in the service sector. Our agenda for today's session is capacity planning approaches, break-even analysis, single product case, multi-product case, applying decision trees to capacity decisions, applying investment analysis to strategy driven investments in which we will further discuss investment, variable cost and cash flow and net present value. Now I will request our expert Sir Abbas to advance our understanding. Sir. Well, uh, thank you Aisha and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in last session while we were discussing capacity, we were uh, almost at a point where we discuss the number of approaches, how do we increase capacity? Certainly demand varies, capacity varies, and capacity accordingly we have to increase the capacity. There are a number of approaches we use uh, for increasing capacity. For example, there are four general approaches, although uh, by no means these are the only approaches. In a particular practical situation, you use uh, various approaches to really uh, increase the capacity. But these are general common ones. You can use a combination of all of these. For example, in approach A, leading demand with the incremental expansion. It means, let's say, uh, this is you, are, you have uh, uh, expected demand curve, and you increase capacity in increments. right? Or you lead demand with one step expansion, as it's here. Or you capacity lags demand with the incremental expansion. It means your demand is first and capacity is later or you use a mixed approach. We'll discuss uh, 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 a sort of uh, in a relatively each one of them in a detail. For example, when we say leading demand with incremental expansion, in this case this curve uh, or this straight line shows the expected demand. Although this is theoretically this may be correct but practically it is not like that. This is not as linear. However, this gives you a very good approximation of the demand pattern. Okay? If we say our expected demand at this much and we create uh, over a period of year 1, year 2, year 3, we see our demand at year 2 will be this much, year 3 will be this much. Now, we have an option that we create this much demand, uh, this much capacity to meet the, our demand in year 2. We create it before time. Okay, as the demand grows, our capacity is already there, right? Similarly, for year three, we increase our capacity here, right? And uh, when we reach year three, it means we don't have any shortage at year two or at year three. We do it in two, we create capacity in two increments, increment one, increment two. Uh, the, the, the second uh, method of leading demand with one step expansion. Let's say, again, we have this expected demand at year three is this much. 
rather than creating two different steps, we create capacity in a single go. Uh, looking at our expected demand at year three will be this much. As such, we will create this much capacity. This is creating a leading demand with one step expansion. But there is yet another way of doing it. That is, uh, your demand lags. Uh, leading demand, capacity leads demand, then capacity lags demand. In this case, in this curve, we see our expected demand is here, right? Curve is here. Once our demand reaches here, then we create capacity. Our demand reaches here, we create capacity. Our demand reaches here, we create capacity. It means our capacity lags behind our demand. Okay. The third approach is uh, in this diagram we show a mixed sort of approach. We average, we increase capacity here, means here we are leading, right? Then here we are lagging, here again we are leading, we are again lagging, we are again leading. We create a sort of, we create one jump, then wait until demand outgrows our capacity. Again we make another jump in capacity increase until such time that our demand further grows. Then we wait for some time and create another capacity. This is, these are essentially the four approaches we use in capacity. And one thing is very important, while we do uh, capacity planning decisions, we have to look into the economics. In fact, uh, remaining uh, of uh, today's session, we'll be discussing the rationale of capacity expansion, right? You cannot indefinitely keep on increasing capacity. You have to have certain financial rationale to increase the capacity. And one tool or one analysis mechanism which we use is the break-even analysis. And break-even analysis is practically a technique used for evaluating the process and equipment alternatives. Let's say you can, uh, you have one alternate of installing a hundred thousand liters a day plant. Another alternate you have, uh, let's say, uh, five hundred thousand liter plant. Another you have, let's say, fifty thousand liter plant a day. Now you have alternate one, you have alternate two, you have alternate three. Based on each alternate, have certain fixed cost. It has certain variable cost. It has certain cash flow over a period of time. It has certain life five years, 10 years, 20 years, and so on. You have to look into alternate A, alternate B, alternate C. And break-even analysis provides you a mechanism at what point your costs and revenues are going to even out. Means when your objective is to find the point of dollar, a uh, point in dollars and units at which the cost equals the revenues. That is the point in our break-even analysis. And it requires estimation of fixed cost, variable cost and revenues. Although it is uh, very difficult to make these estimations, yet without making these estimations, they will have to be very rational, they'll have to be very candid and very, uh, uh, very pragmatic estimates of fixed cost, variable cost and revenues in order to make a break-even analysis. Uh, uh, now, before we really get into the break-even uh, analysis, we'll look at what the fixed costs are. Fixed costs are costs that continue even if no units are produced. Means that is whatever you spend, it is there. You have to spend that. Depreciation, taxes, debt, mortgage payment, these are the types of uh, fixed, your, your costs. fixed costs. A variable costs are costs that vary with the volume of units you produce. You produce 10,000. Variable cost will be less, you produce 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, your costs will keep on increasing because their variable costs are linked with your production capacity. Labor cost means if you produce 10,000, you'll need less labor. Mm. If you produce 10,000, you'll need less material. For 50,000, you'll need more material and portion of the utilities. Then the contribution is a difference between the selling price and variable cost. I mean, variable cost is the cost which is which you incur to produce a unit output and selling price is and the difference between selling price of that unit is what we call contribution now well uh, there are certain number of assumptions uh, for break-even analysis we have to be very careful in making these assumptions although these assumptions are generic and they don't generally hold but still they give a very good approximation of uh, our, uh, mo for modeling our investment decision. Assumptions, for example, in break-even analysis are costs and revenues are linear function. Actually, it is not. 
your costs and revenues are not linear function. Generally, not the case in the real world, as uh, I mentioned. We actually know these costs. It's very difficult to see what will be the price of a particular item at certain uh, two, two years from now, five years from now. Or uh, certain investment, what will be the interest rate, for example, two years from now, and so on. Uh, and there is no time value for money. This is, these are the three major assumptions which we, we make in break-even analysis. And we know these assumptions generally don't hold, but this break-even model gives you a very, very good approximation of your investment decision. Right. Sir, would you explain the break-even point with the help of an example? Yes. Uh, Aisha, I'll, I'll explain it with the help of uh, this diagram. Uh, look at this diagram. This tells us cost in dollars and volume units per period of time. Regardless how much you produce, you produce 100 units or 200 units or 1,000 units, your fixed cost is going to remain. This line is a depiction of our fixed cost. Right? Now, this line is a total cost line, right? And it tells us, uh, th this is a variable cost. As you increase the output, as your number of units go increase, your total cost curve increases, right? It means your variable cost is linked with the number of units you produce, right? Now, when you start producing, then obviously you start selling, right? This is your total revenue line. This. Uh, this line is your total revenue line. When you produce up till certain point, this is your loss corridor, right? Your costs are total cost is more, your revenues are less. Until such point, your total revenue line and total cost line crease across each other. At this point, your total revenue line and your revenues and your costs are equal. When they are equal, we call it a break-even point. Now, now you, if you are total revenues keep on increasing at the same rate and your cost as you have planned you enter into the profit corridor and as you produce more you are uh, increasing the profit or contribution uh, for whatever you are producing. This is the graphical representation of break-even analysis. We have a algebraic uh, uh, method actually that goes behind this uh, uh, graphical method. For example, break-even point could be in number of units. Break-even point is in uh, terms of dollar, where P is the price unit after all the discounts. X is the number of units produced. TR stands for total revenues for PX. F is fixed cost. V is variable cost per unit. TC is total cost, which is equal to F plus VX. Now, Break-even point occurs, break-even point occurs where your total revenues are equal to total cost or total revenue is Px equal total cost is equal F plus Vx. You equate total revenues with total cost. Where your total revenues and total cost equal are equal, that is your break-even point. Now, break-even point in terms of number of units, right? That is F over P minus V, right? P is price, V is variable cost. F is fixed cost. That is break-even point in number of units. Now, in terms of dollars, if we want to same break-even point in number of units, in dollars, price, X, total revenues, fixed cost, variable cost, and total cost. In terms of dollars, break-even point, number of P, price per unit. Yeah. Whatever you have produced, this is your production into the your, price, your price. Okay. And now B E P X, you replace it with the previous equation and you come up with a break even point in terms of dollar will be F over 1 minus V over P. And our profit will be total revenues minus total cost. You replace total revenues with PX, you replace TC with F plus VX and you come up with this final equation. This is the actually your fixed cost. Uh, I'll, I'll explain it with the help of a, a practical example. If your fixed costs are $10,000, material cost is 0.75 per unit, direct labor is 1.50 units uh, per dollars per unit, selling price is $4 per unit, your break-even point 
in terms of dollars using that equation, mathematical equation we came up with, will be uh, by putting, plugging in the values in this equation we come up with 22,857.14. That is if when you are, your dollar value, your sales volume reach this point, you, that is your, in terms of dollar, that is your break even point. Now, break even point in terms of x, we put, it is 5,000 in the other equation, we put the values and we get 5,714 units. This is the break even point in terms of dollars, this is break even point in terms of units. Now, uh, we plot the same example which I, I discussed here in this uh, diagram. We see our fixed costs are here, 10,000. Our revenue line is here. Our total cost line is here. And they meet at approximately 22,000 here and 5,000 some hundred here. OK? This is the, gra uh, again, graphical description of break-even example. Now, Sir, generally a factory or a production facility produce multiple products say an oil pipeline transports crude as well as the refined products in different capacities having different cost profiles. How this situation is handled? Okay, in break-even analysis obviously uh, we, all, we, we do the same thing but replicate it for a number of times and for which we have break-even a point for example in dollars for multi-product case we have summation and the same equation with WI. WI is new uh, I would say uh, I and W, they are new uh, parameters which we add in multi-product case. V is variable cost per unit as usual, P is price per unit, F is fixed cost as usual. W is the percent each product of total dollar sales, W is here, and I is each product. It will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I will replace with a an, with an product number and we'll use this equation to come up with multiple product case. For example, we have, let's say, a fixed cost of 3,500 per month. In the, again, bakery, coming to the bakery example, our product one is sandwiches, price is this much, cost is this much, annual forecast is sale is this much. Soft drinks, price, cost, annual sales, baked potato, tea, salad bar, and so on. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't uh, come the mathematical calculation for a pipeline example you mentioned, but this is fairly simple example to really uh, make the point. You can replace, for example, uh, product A in the aisle pipeline example, product B, product C, but the concept will remain uh, the same. Right. Now, uh, using these figures, let's say for the item selling price, then variable cost, V over P, formula 1 minus bracket V over P, annual forecast of sales, percent of sales, weighted contribution, which is column 5 into column 7. We came up with annual forecast of sale, 46,300, percent of sales, 1, and so on. This is how we handle the multiple products. We use this equation, and using this equation, we come up with our, our uh, let's say uh, this is BEP in dollar, break even, 67,200, and our daily sales will be, if we have 312 working days, 215.38. That is our break even point. And in terms of number of sandwiches, about 33 sandwiches per day, and similarly we can come up with other uh, products. Product. Again, we, we need to have a break even point in terms of dollar, break even point in terms of number of units. We, uh, this equation presented here, gives us a methodology to come up with uh, the break-even analysis. Right. When considering capacity problems, obviously we will consider multiple alternatives having different cost variations. Is, this, is there some systematic way of handling such situations? Oh yes, oh yes. There are a number of ways. Uh, one methodology is actually what we call uh, decision tree analysis. Let's say you are talking of the alternates. You have alternate one, of a design capacity, alternate two, alternate three, or alternate four. N alternates are available to you. Whenever you talk of the uh, N, there have to be, since these analysis becomes very complex, as you get into the uh, number dollars and amounts and so on, uh, it becomes very complex. There ought to be some systematic way of handling that. 
And I'll explain that with the help of uh, an example diagram here. Let's say you have an option for uh, installing a larger plant, let's say 500,000 liters a day, again. Medium plant, 250,000 liters a day plant, or a small plant with, uh, let's say, 100,000 liters a day. Or you have always an alternate, and I mean, this is, this is very interesting. Uh, in uh, the analysis, we use an option, do nothing. Do nothing option is very interesting, although uh, it, if you don't do anything, you don't lose anything, you don't make any spending, and you get zero. Your outcome is zero. Let's say in the large plant, if you install a large plant, there are again two options available. Either the market is favorable or the market is unfavorable. The, the, the chances of market being favorable is 0.4, and the ch chances of market being unfavorable is 0.6. Right? And again, market favorable for medium plant, unfavorable for medium plant, favorable, unfavorable. It means the, the probability of the market being favorable and unfavorable for each of the three alternate or four alternate is the same. Okay? We come up with, let's say, our, if we install a large plant, plant market is favorable, our, uh, let's say, revenues are 100,000. Market is unfavorable, we lose. 90,000. In medium plant, if market is favorable, we make $60,000. If market is unfavorable, we, make, we lose $10,000. In small plant, if the market is favorable, we make $40,000 or we lose $5,000. This is what we call the uh, decision tree analysis. And as such, large plant, EMV stands for expected monetary value. EMV for the large plant is 0.4 into 100,000 plus uh, 0.6 into 90,000 is minus 14,000. It means the expected monetary value of a large plant is negative, right? Similarly, uh, we calculate the expected monetary value for the medium plant, which is 18,000. We calculate the expected monetary value for the small plant, which is 13,000. In this case, we see negative expected monetary value this not we, favorable uh, not not feasible yeah. this is uh, do nothing is not feasible as it's zero small plant is less medium plant is the bet because it, its expected monetary value is more than uh, it's the maximum uh, that that is the maximum you you get as said we'll choose the medium plant right again i'll say this is primarily the simplistic and very basic model. As you enter into the practical situation, there are the complexities and you have to revise your assumptions and you have to make your data more as close to as practical assumptions and make your calculations. Right. Sir, so we would like to know about some other techniques uh, which can be applied for the capacity decisions. Okay. Uh, Aisha, I think in the last session we discussed that capacity decisions are such significant for any uh, plant or for any organization, they require very, very uh, thorough investigation. And in each investigation, you know, I think in the very first session we come up with uh, one prime uh, purpose of the corporation is increasing the shareholder value. That is the money. As such, whenever we talk of the capacity decisions, plant A, plant B, plant C, capacity A, capacity B, capacity C, we look in terms of dollars. How much revenues we are going to get, how much value we are going to create, how much profit we are going to earn, how much value of the shareholders we are going to increase. That is the key. And in doing so, we require the certain degree of economic analysis. The more the investment required, the more uh, you have at stake, the deeper analysis you'll go in. As such, uh, the, the investment is made based on how much revenues you are going to get, how much uh, uh, value of the company is going to increase. As such, strategy-driven investment is very important. Operations may be responsible for return on investment. Operations department, because operations is to produce the, uh, the, the, the goods and services to be sold uh, to, to the ultimate clients. And on that uh, operations work, the return on investment is uh, linked to. Analyzing capacity alternate should include capital investment, 
variable cost, cash flow, and net present value. Okay, let's say we think of alternate A. Let's say in terms of pipeline, we are talking about the pipeline of certain capacity. 48 inch diameter capacity, 60 inch diameter capacity, or 100 inch diameter capacity intercontinental pipeline from point A to point B. Okay, each of these pipeline has certain cost, fixed cost, and certain variable cost. Capacity, their pipelines capacity to handle crude, capacity to handle finished product, and whatnot. Means that is a huge project. As such, each of these alternate is going to bring you various cash flows, right? If you have a various cash flows then you have to look into cash flow of plant A, plant B, plant C, plant D, right? And let's say if you're going to generate a cash flow in year two, in year three, in year four, in year five, what will be its value today based on the interest rate or discount rate for the call, right? As such, capacity decisions are of very significant importance for the company. Now, one methodology is what we call net present value. Net present value is if we, uh, let's say, make an investment and we get certain cash flow or year one, year two, year three, year four, what will be its value today? Means whatever is our cash flow in, uh, uh, in future, would like to look at the value today. And for that, we use this uh, uh, mathematical uh, formula, P equal F over one plus I to the power N. I is the interest rate. N is the number of years, P is the present value, F is the future value, okay? If we have a future cash flow, what will be its value today? For that, uh, generally, while this works fine, it is cumbersome for larger values of N. Means if N is two years, three years, four years, five years, means this formula is all right, but it is cumbersome. As the N grows, let's say N goes to 20 years, how are you going to do it? The, the, the mathematicians have come up with the tables, uh, what we call interest rate tables or discount tables, and uh, or we call uh, factors, will be coming up with shortly. Uh, again, the same uh, formula equal to fx, where x is a factor from table s 7 wine will show shortly defined as this much. This is basically the, the experts have calculated and tabulated so that we should be able to use these values for making calculations of net present value uh, calculations. Okay. This table, for example, shows the present value of dollar one. In year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, what will be the present value of one dollar at five percent discount rate in year five? It will be this much at 6%, at 7%, at 10%, right? right? This is how we calculate the NPV. Uh, we use these factors, means F is this, we get the appropriate number from this, let's say 7% at year five, this is our, uh, we, we, this is our X, then we make uh, multiplication with X, okay. Analysis and net present value in capacity planning. Ladies and gentlemen, today we discussed a break-even analysis in which we discussed about the single product case, multi-product case. Uh, then we discussed applying decision trees to capacity decisions, applying investment analysis to strategy-driven investments, in which we discussed investment, variable cost and cash flow, and net present value. With this, we conclude this session. See you with another session of production and operations management. Till then, thank you and Allah Hafiz.